Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications. Thanks for watching. Um, we today are going to talk about digitally encrypted wireless specifically for sports. Um, so today we're going to focus, there's a lot of different digital wireless on the market. Today we're going to focus on those that are specifically have transmitters made to go on sports player. Uh, so we're going to look at the Q5X system, uh, which features the player mic and the player mic S. And we're going to look at the Zaxcom system, which features the ZMT4 Flex. Um, so as you can see, both of these are rubberized uh, and flexible for maximum player protection. Um, we have a slideshow today. It's very exciting. Um, so first, let's talk about the importance of digital encryption. Uh, so last year, 2022, the uh, sports industry in the U.S. generated $39.1 billion. Uh, so that is a pretty big chunk of change. Um, sports by nature are competitive. I mean, they call it competition. So teams are always looking for a way to, to gain a competitive advantage over their opponents. Uh, so let's think about Spygate back in 2007, uh, and also think about the Astros trash can scandal of uh, 2017. And to put a date on this, uh, the recent um, bench coaches out of their box thing that happened uh, last week, I believe it was in Toronto, uh, that uh, where two baseball teams got upset and where they thought the bench coaches were trying to steal signs. Uh, so people are always trying to get one over on their competition. Um, so with your standard analog transmitter, anyone can listen in uh, with an analog receiver if they can find the right frequency. Um, so, and by anyone, I mean anyone. I mean, I've, I've had people come in uh, and say like, I turned my TV on and uh, I could hear, uh, you know, the, the conversation that was going on on the other room. And that's because, you know, our standard UHF microphones operate on the same thing as, as TV channels. If you're looking, um, you know, if you actually tune a standard television into that same frequency, that same TV channel, you will pick up the audio coming through. Um, so digital wireless needs a matching receiver, so it's got to be the correct brand to have the, the ability to decode the digital signal. But encryption adds, uh, adds the need for a password and a passcode, which makes it even more secure. Um, also important, in addition to protecting the information of the play that's going to be called, um, is the, you know, the protection of the player. So, Fans uh, want access to their favorite teams and favorite players. Uh, and players, so with that, you know, players wearing a wireless microphone for in-game broadcast has become more and more common. Uh, you know, think about what you see on the NFL or in, in baseball, hockey, you know, getting the hits, getting the plays, all that stuff. So uh, player protection has become very, very, very important. Um, you know, the, the older, um, you know, metal or, uh, you know, things with hard corners can hurt a player and professional athletes are paid tens of millions of dollars. Uh, you know, the top players earning, gosh, I think some of the baseball contracts are up to like 40, 50 million dollars a year. Uh, so protecting those players against injury uh, is paramount. Um, so flex these flexible and rubberized transmitters are going to be the best protection, the best option uh, for keeping those players on the field, uh, you know, when they are potentially taking a hit of up to 1,600 pounds of force as if they were being uh, tackled by a, a, you know, really great linebacker or lineman. Other thing that's important about these systems is remote control. You know, once these are on a player, if, uh, you know, if there's an issue with the mic, you're not going to go running out to the field and stop the game to fix their microphone. You just can't. So these uh, remote control systems to be able to manage battery life, change frequencies, and adjust transmitter gain uh, are super important because once it's on them, there is no way you're, you're going to have access to make changes. So uh, let's talk about these two solutions. Uh, we'll start off with uh, the Q5X. So first, we're going to uh, take a look at the transmitters. So we've got the player mic and the player mic S, and these transmit to the Shure ADX5D, specifically looking at the, um, at the portable solutions in this. There is a rack mount solution available as well. Uh, and then we've got the mic commander off to the side, which can remote control both of these, okay? So, looking more specifically 
uh, at the transmitters. So this is, uh, this is the player mic S, so this is the short version, the long version is about that long. Um, so the player mic uh, battery life is about eight hours, uh, the player mic S four hours, and that's at 10 milliwatts. Um, you can adjust the output power between two and 20 milliwatts. There are two different frequency options. So there's the G57 band, which goes from 470 to 608. That's basically all of UHF that's available in the US. And then there's the X55 band, which is all the way up to 941. Um, has AES-256 encryption, uh, high density mode. Uh, it's got this one pin LIMO connector. Uh, and the larger one weighs uh, about 60 uh, grams, and the smaller one weighs about 48 grams. Um, one note about this with the battery life, internal batteries um, only on these. So it's rechargeable via USB. Um, and then remote control using the mic commander. Okay, so moving on to the receiver. Um, you know, this is the Shure ADX5D. So this is a two channel digital receiver. Uh, it's camera slot in ready, so you can change the back plate out and actually slot that in the back of your, um, of your camera with a slot. Um, it's got the high density mode. It's network controllable via show link. So if you do have, um, you know, if you are running a laptop or something like that with wireless workbench, you can remote control that. And there are, um, there are rack mount options available. Um, and then here's the remote. So uh, this is the mic commander. You can turn all of the transmitters on and off, adjust frequency gain, RF and power. Um, you can make different groups uh, to be able to do a bunch of different transmitters at once. And you can also monitor the battery level from here. Uh, there's a 40 meter range. So you're gonna be able to, if you're standing at the 50 yard line, you're gonna be able to get most anybody anywhere. Um, this is PC compatible uh, with USB, and you can actually control up to 300 mics with uh, the mic control program. Um, and it has an internal battery, so you can very easily walk around with it and you know, go up to one, that, let's say the left tackle, turn theirs on, turn the other person's off, make adjustments, all that stuff on the fly. Uh, very portable. Uh, so again, quick overview of the Q5X system. Uh, again, transmitters, player mic, player mic S, transmitting to the shore, ADX5D, remote controlled by the Q5X mic commander. Exclamation points. Yay. I'm really enjoying this drawing thing, so if I get a little into it, forgive me. All right, so now, Let's talk about uh, the Zaxcom solutions. Zaxcom has a bunch of different receiver and remote control options, uh, so I'm going to get to do a lot more drawing on this presentation. So to start out with, uh, we have the ZMT Flex. Okay, so the ZMT Flex can transmit to any of these four portable receivers. So there is the URX100, there is the RX200. There is the QRX200 and the QRX235. All right, so those are all the receivers. One, two, three, four. Now, in terms of uh, remote control, so there are multiple remote control options. There is the QRX235, which, which can remote control the ZMT Flex. There is the Camera Link that can remote control the ZMT Flex. And there is the IFB. 300, which can also remote control that. So as you can see, there's a lot of options there. Uh, so let's take a look at the specs on the transmitter directly. Um, so the ZMT4 Flex has a seven hours of battery life, um, has a selectable output power of 10, 25, and 50 milliwatts, uh, and can transmit from 512 to 608. There are 16 million encryption codes. Uh, and multiple different transmission modes. So there's XR, which is the full quality, and ZHD, which is the high density mode. There are two microdot connectors for stereo transmission. So if you were to put this, let's say, under center, you could put a microphone on the front of the pads to get the, you know, the real crunch when people uh, you know, meet together, and then another one on the back of the pads to be able to get the quarterbacks calling, you know, hut, hut, hike. Uh, whatever it is they're going to say. All Zaxcom transmitters have a built-in timecode recorder uh, into their transmitter so they can transmit 
and record at the same time. So even if there is interference, even if, um, if something happens, you always have that recorder going. Um, there is up to 128 dB of dynamic range, it weighs about 85 grams, and it has full remote control via Zaxnet. And again, rechargeable battery, uh, similar to the Q5X, but with a uh, proprietary battery charger. All right, so let's talk about receivers. So receivers, there are, uh, there are a couple of different options. So there is the, let's go back to our green here. There's the RX200, which is a single transmitter stereo receiver. So with that, you could get both microphones output from, uh, output from the left and right channels of the RX200. It's powered by AA batteries or externally. Um, then there is the QRX200 dual channel receiver, so it can take two transmitters that will both output stereo or mono, uh, and that's full range. And then you've got the QRX235, which is a narrow band receiver similar to the QRX200, so two stereo channels, um, so receiving two stereo transmitters or two mono transmitters, but only in a narrow block, but it does have the Zaxnet port on it. And then you've got a, another uh, single channel version. Uh, this is the URX100. It's a little bit more portable. Looks a little bit less like a standard thing, but it does have a headphone jack on it. Uh, so you could listen directly as well as output there. Um, another note uh, that many of these receivers have time have time code outputs so the RX200 the QRX235 and the URX100 all have time code outputs so you could actually use them as sync boxes on your camera as well um, and Zaxcom does have several uh, I wouldn't even call them rack mount but multi-channel options with multi couplers four channel eight channel 12 channel 24 channel if you're looking for that kind of thing but right now we're just focusing on the battery power that could be mounted on camera or in a bag uh, easily. So now talking about remote control, there are again several different options. Uh, so the first is the Zaxcom IFB300. Um, so the first of all, Zaxnet operates in 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so there's a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter antenna on all of these. I'm just circling them here. Um, so it can be used to turn the transmitters on and off, adjust the frequency gain, change the RF power, there's group control, and um, you can use it to start and stop recording. So this is the IFB300, has a built-in two-channel recorder backup, time code, um, time code and the remote control capabilities. Uh, it's external power only. Um, and then if we hop across over here, this is the camera link. The camera link is essentially the same thing as the IFB300, but it has a two-channel uh, stereo transmitter as well. So this is more for like in a bag if you're trying to send a, you have a, a mixer that you're trying to send a stereo feed to camera, you can do that with this. Both of these can interact with the Zaxcom GUI bridge, which will give you the ability to control uh, all your transmitters from your cell phone, uh, which is pretty great. Um, and then the last, uh, last but not least, is we talked about this QRX235, which is both a receiver and a Zaxnet transmitter. Uh, so it can really simplify things for you if you're looking for an all-in-one package where you just change the frequency, it'll automatically populate that to the, the transmitter. So to review, and so I can draw more lines, uh, we've got the ZMT Flex, which is your transmitter, your recording transmitter that can transmit to your URX100, RX200, QRX235, or QRX200. And again, URX100, RX200, 200, and QRX235. And then you've got your Zaxnet transmitters, your IFB300, your camera link, and your QRX235. And if you can remember all of this, um, I'll send you a free Gotham hat. Okay, so um, to wrap it up, 
yeah, that's that's basically it. That's the the overview of these two systems and how they work at a very very high level. If you have any questions or comments or want to see specifically how these different systems work, you know, we can go through menu settings and all that stuff. But that is these are the different pieces and parts of these systems that you would need uh, for any kind of sports broadcast. So thank you for watching. As always, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and Twitter and what's the other one? Gosh, TikTok. TikTok. Gosh, we're on the TikToks now. Um, but as always, uh, the thing that I prefer is if you email us at info at gothamsound.com um, with any questions or comments, we can always help you out. Uh, for this video and more, you can always watch us at gothamsound.tv. And thank you so much for watching. Go sports.